Hey everyone, it's Christopher Dean, and today we're going to look at hard and soft 8-point grids. Which one do I use? Let's take a look. Okay, let's get ready to read what looks like a long but pretty necessary explanation of what hard and soft 8-point grids are. What does 8-point mean? Everything is a multiple of 8, right? From spacing, type scale, icon size, the height of each element. It all goes 8, 16, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, and so on. With the occasional uses of 4 and 12. This is done to make sure that everything you're using in your designs follows a global scale that is understood and shared between design and development. When it translates over to development, the scale and the values that are created at a design level are turned into global variables that basically scales the entire experience. Okay, so what is a hard grid? Everything snaps to a strict 8x8 pixel grid and typography sits on a baseline. This sounds ideal but causes issues in development with the space between certain elements not being divisible or multiplied by 8. You'll also run into trouble when designing for an iPhone as the width of the artboard is 375 pixels, which is also not divisible by 8. What's a soft grid? Everything still follows the 8-point scale, but we remove the vertical baseline and horizontal adherence to a strict 8x8 pixel grid. The spacing between every element can become a multiple of 8, and you'll find that this approach is closer to how development works. And what do I use? Okay, so for a while I was using a hard grid, but over the last few years where I've helped build design systems that scale entire organizations and running polls with you guys and other design teams I've worked with, I'm now all in on the soft grid. Let me show you why. All right, I'm going to show you a couple of examples. This is the first one, which is pretty much a ripoff of Medium and one of the articles I have on there. From the top down, we've got a header, a hero image, an H1, an author area, a share this area, some body copy, an H2, and an inline image. And okay, if you look at them from this scale, you can't really tell any difference, right? But on the left, we've got the hard grid, and on the right, we've got the soft grid. Let's go into the hard grid and see what's happening. First, I'm gonna turn on layout, and you can see the baseline come in, as well as the vertical columns there. And if I scroll down, you'll see how the typography sits on that baseline. So this H1 is sitting right on that one, this body copy is sitting right there. The author name and date is sitting on there, and so is this. But to achieve that, you can see that the elements aren't sitting exactly on the grid. If we zoom out and I turn off layout and the grid, and instead turn on a bunch of spacing symbols I'll put together, that'll help us see this in more detail. And you can see that between the header and the hero image is 48, so that's fine. But between the hero image and the H1, it's 51. Between the H1 and this area, it's 20. Then you get 38, 51, and 47. So that's not very consistent, right? And if you're a developer and you're trying to work out some type of global scale for your margins of padding, that's going to cause some issues. I mean, basically, they're going to have to round up or down based on what they see. So 51 would become 48. 20 would become 24, 38 would be probably 40, 51 would be 48 again, and then 47 would be 48 as well. So let's take a look at the soft grid and see how that changes. Let's select the artboard and turn on layout. And this time we don't have a horizontal baseline. We only have the vertical columns, right? We zoom in, turn on the spacing symbols for this one, then you get 48, 48, because it's pushing the H1 down until it hits the bottom of 48. And at the bottom of this, you add 24, and then the bottom of these two, which if I turn on the grid, actually lock into place and sit directly on top of each other, you get 40. Now the text, if we were gonna turn on a grid, you can see is off the baseline, but that's okay because we want that fluid nature horizontally as well as vertically. Then we get 48, the H2, 40, and then the inline image. And that's really the point of the soft grid. 
It's governed by the space in between elements instead of locking you into a perfect 8x8 pixel grid. Okay, the next example is a mobile layout. And here's an example where somebody is verifying their phone number via a code that's been sent to them by SMS. It's come up as a mobile screen and we've got some content there. I'm going to turn on the layout grid for both of them. There you go. And just like the desktop blog example, we've got the baseline here, but we don't have it here. And there's also another difference. If I turn on the grid, there's 15 pixels here and 16 pixels here. And that's one of the only ways you can get a perfect 8x8 grid on the iPhone width, which is 375. Let's just turn the grid off again. I'm going to go turn on the spacing symbols for both. Turn off the layout for both. Let's just take a look. Okay, from the top down, we've got 16, which is fine. Then this one uses 21, 17, 26, 8, and 24. So the last two are all right. On the right-hand side there, you've got that 15 pixel margin. And if we go in a little bit closer, you can see it all there very clearly, right? If I turn on the grid, that's on the baseline. So is that text. This is perfectly within that 8x8 grid. But then it all falls to pieces over here to the right. Comes back there and there where we've got a four spacer between this icon and the helper text there. In the soft grid example, however, we've got 16. 16 on both sides. Then after the close icon, you've got 24 before you get to the heading. 16 before you get to the content. 24 before you get to that input field. The helper text is then eight after that. And then at the bottom, we have 24 as the margin below the CTA. And again, the soft grid with its more fluid but consistent way of dealing with a global scale, for me, looks like it's gonna be better for design and development. But which one would you use? Would you use the hard grid or the soft grid? Let me know in the comments. And that's pretty much it for this one. As always, I'm going to put a link to this file in the description of this video if you want to play along. And really, I hope you're just taking care out there, looking after yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.